G'day, g'day. Welcome to my Land Rover Defender Overlanding Camper Build. In this episode, I'll give you a full rundown inside and out of both the Defender and the Overlanding Camper. First of all, my name's Jess Bond, also known as Wild Bond on socials. I'm an adventure lifestyle photographer from Tasmania, and we're currently on a lap around Australia, seeing some of the most epic landscapes, full driving all over the place, and showcasing what our fine country has to offer. Now, if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe. I'd love for you guys to be sticking around, but let's get stuck into this camper build. Now, the reason why I built this thing was because when I was looking for quotes to try and buy one, it was just way out of my budget. So I devised a plan to try and build this without any experience whatsoever. I've never really built anything before in my life and taking on this project was one hell of a challenge. But I'm very, very happy with the results, so I'm pretty stoked to share them with you guys. Now, the reason why I designed this and why I built it this way was because I initially planned to drive from Tasmania to Iceland over one to two years. So I needed something where I could live out, live out of and work out of as I was traveling and also be able to deal with the Arctic temperatures up in the north and then also like the desert temperatures down in Australia. The vehicle itself is a 2003 Land Rover Defender TD5, so it's five cylinder turbo diesel. Now it's got a few mods on it, so let's get stuck in. First thing up is we have the bull bar. So this is custom made for the Defender and in Australia, we have to be a little bit careful about the animals. Unfortunately, it's just the reality of the fact, but we also want to protect the front of the vehicle. We don't want to get stuck in a situation where we're out in the middle of nowhere and have some damage to the front of the vehicle and can't get back home. Now inbuilt, we also have a King's winch. So it's a 12,000 pound winch, I believe. Nothing super fancy about it, kind of cheap and cheerful, but gets us out of all the mischief that uh, we get ourselves into. With the tyres, I've gone for the BF Goodrich KO2s. Now they're an all-terrain tyre, 31 inch. And the reason why I went with the 31 inch is because the idea initially was to be driving from Tasmania to Iceland. In the middle of nowhere, like really big 33, 35 inch tyres, they're really hard to source. So I wanted to go with this size tyre to try and make sure that if something does go wrong, it's going to be easily replaceable whilst I'm on the road. Now you notice here that the snorkel is a little bit different than usual. Usually it's coming out of this side pocket here, um, but I've rerouted it on the inside to come out of this vent. Now the reason being was I really wanted to have a rack that would carry all my spares and my spare wheel up top as well. But this rack actually comes down on the inside and runs on the inside of these panels and hooks down into the chassis for extra stability. And that was going straight over the top of where this uh, snorkel line was going. So I rerouted that and have the extra bracing for the uh, rack here. And it is absolute beast. It is so strong. I'm so, so happy with it. A mate of mine actually designed this um, and built it for me. So. Massive shout out to you, Rowan Frost, Ledge. Okay, up top we have a couple of boxes, storage boxes, and then the spare tire. Um, this one's only full at the minute. The other one doesn't actually have anything in it. So I'm probably gonna replace that with some jerry cans for some extra fuel. Don't really wanna be carrying extra weight up top really when the jerry cans are full, but we'll see how we go there. We also have a 48 inch light bar across the front here. Don't really know what brand it is, but it came with the vehicle. So yeah, it's super good though. Very, very happy with that. Now coming around, we have the side steps or rock sliders around the side. In the suspension here in the rear, we actually have full airbag suspension. Now this is from Airbag Man up in Queensland. These guys, <laughs> The amount of times these airbag suspensions have got me out of sticky situation is insane. Especially because the vehicle is quite top heavy, so it leans over a little bit. If we're in like four wheel drive situations where things are a little bit off camber and a little bit hairy, being able to deflate the top side and then inflate the lower side, oh my God, literally lifesaver makes stressful situations a lot more manageable. So airbag man, very, very happy with that. Coming around to the rear. So I have my recovery gear under the back here. So we've got a couple of Max tracks, 
Uh, we've got a shovel and a high lift jack. Now that's all tucked up nice and neat under the back here. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say if you're bottom, bottoming out into like deep mud and sand and all that kind of stuff, how are you gonna get it out? Realistically, in the sand, you're only gonna be going to the diff, so I should still have room there. If I'm going into mud, which is gonna be very, very rare, um, I'll be getting these out beforehand and making sure I've got access to them before. So, very happy with how neat and tidy they are. They're all locked up, so nobody can steal them either. So, very, very happy with that. I guess from now, we've kind of gone around the outside of the vehicle. Oh, one thing's for, uh, we actually have an awning here. I believe it's from Sahara. Again, it came with the vehicle. So uh, it's just a 2.5 by two meter awning. Very happy with it. Does whatever it needs to do. And it was also gray, which fit in with the, uh, with the camera here. So no complaints there. Now, that's pretty much the outside. Let's jump on the inside. So on the inside, it's a pretty stock standard interior. I just have added a couple of things though. One being the Nanocom. So this reads out all the engine data uh, straight from the ECU and you can clear codes and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty essential if I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I'm co I've got codes popping up. Not that I'll probably know what they mean, but <laughs> it's essential. Uh, also put in a doubled in uh, stereo system here. My mate Al, absolute bloody legend, helping me out here. It was a bit of a rat's nest behind there, so he's cleaned everything up. Bloody grateful for that. Um, and then we also have the airbags uh, monitoring system here. So we can turn it on and monitor what the pressures are in the airbags. And I'll just have a remote on my keys that I can um, inflate or deflate depending on, um, on what the uh, pressures need to be at. We have the UHF in the front here, little map light, because it used to be a fire engine truck, apparently. Um, and then, yeah, moving into the back. This is where both myself and Sam, who's on the camera right now, uh, we throw our camera bags, just quick access. Obviously, we're photographers, videographers. We want to be being, we want to be able to grab our gear as quickly as possible if we're driving along and something pops up. So, very easy access there. Behind the seat, we actually have a subwoofer and a little bit of recovery gear. Now, the sub, I'm not really one to have the old, uh, the Duffin Beats cranking, but it is a pretty loud vehicle. So I want to be able to make sure that the, the music's like audible and we can uh, listen to podcasts and all that kind of stuff as we're traveling. Now, Underneath, you won't be able to see any of this, but I did actually sound dead in the whole thing. So Car Builders sent out a kit, um, which had the sound deadening panels, plus like the foam and all that kind of stuff that went over the top. Now, that has helped a huge, huge amount, and I'm so thankful for those guys. So yeah, if you need to sound deaden your, um, your Defender Car Builders, absolutely love those guys. So yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I did actually put like one more inverter in here, uh, mainly because if we're charging batteries and all that kind of stuff as we're going, um, like mainly drone batteries, camera batteries, then we want to be able to have like quick access rather than jumping in the back all the time. So that's also very, very handy to have. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Should we get into the camper tour, I guess? Yeah, let's hit it. So first things first with the camper, let's start on the outside. Now a lot of these things probably won't make a whole lot of sense until we get to the inside, but let's show this anyway. So first up, we have about 70 litres of water on board, but we have a 20 litre jerry here and then a 50 litre uh, tank underneath the actual camper. So the water gets sucked through the jerry can and then it goes through the water pump and then through these filters and then out up into the sink up there. Now the reason why I got the sink, the filter, sorry, was because I was gonna be traveling through Southeast Asia and all that kind of thing, so I didn't wanna to have to buy bottled water the entire time. So the first filter is a sediment filter, and then the second one is a bacteria filter. So we could pretty much fill up from anywhere and then still have drinking water. Now, we also have a shower outlet here. Now, this is pretty awesome, purely for the fact that we can change this water source to anything pretty much. So if we heat up like a pot um, of like warm water and then put this into the pot, then we can just run the water pump and then we can have like a warm shower straight from here. 
So outdoor shower, all sorted. Also in here, we have the, this is the gray water pipe for the sink. Now I don't have a gray water tank. Reason being, I was kind of running out of room a little bit and I figured that if I was in a situation um, where I couldn't pump it out or couldn't let the water drain out, I'd just have it on a ball valve here um, and I'd let this fill up a little bit. So you can get a couple of liters in here, not that I'd really want to do that too often. Um, and yeah, and once I'm in an area where I can let it out, then just pull it out of the cupboard and then open up the ball valve. Also in here, we have the gas for the oven. Um, and then we also have the diesel for the diesel heater. Now, also tucked away up the top here is an airbag man compressor. Now this thing is an absolute beast. I love it purely for the fact that it is so fast in pumping up our tires and is just super reliable. Now that runs the airbag suspension at the back, but it also has an, an outlet valve at the, at the side here that we can plug in um, just to pump up our tires. Now, so it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty much like a little one man band when it comes to that whole airbag and uh, pumping up the tire system, which is awesome. Now with the water, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to be honest, but here's the inlet point. Um, so I just have to put a funnel in here and then fill that up, which then fills up the tank underneath. And then we just have a breather valve here. So opening that up as we're filling, making sure that all that air is coming out as we're filling it up. And yeah, that's pretty much the cupboard. There's a lot going on, but um, yeah, all nice, little, neat, tidy little cupboard. Now, this is a pop-top camper, so just gonna flick the latches. We've got four latches, two at the front, two at the back. Flick those open, and then once we jump inside, we'll pop the top. like it's meant to be. So very easy to pop the top, which is awesome. Just pushing her up from the inside. Now the camper itself is on four of these um, scissor lifts, um, but only two of them actually have the springs in because if all four are on, then it's really hard to get the roof back down. So just got two on, but that's just enough to help push it up, which is awesome. And then it adds that uh, stability once it's actually up. Now it's probably worth mentioning that the walls are actually made out of 25 mil fiberglass composite panel, and the whole thing is all just glued together. Now on the corners here, we have the aluminum angle, and that's also just glued on. Now the reason being is that with the glue, it allows for that flex as we're going over this rough terrain. If it was all an aluminium welded piece or structure there, over time those welds could like fail and break, but the glue is actually going to be the thing that allows it for maximum strength but durability over time. So it scared the hell out of me initially, but it's what all the pros do apparently, so sticking with that. Now it does look like a pretty big heavy beast, it is actually only 3,300 kilos once everything's fully loaded with two people in it, uh, full fuel, full water, all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually very happy with that. The GVM of the vehicle is 3,500, so still 200 Ks under GVM. So happy with that. So that wraps up the outside tour of the camper. Let me know what you guys think. Is there anything that you guys would do differently? Um, and also, if you're enjoying this so far, please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you guys around for the following adventures. But uh, let's go check out the inside. So there's a few things that I had to have in this camper build. Now I've lived in vans and all that kind of stuff for four or five years on and off over, over that time. So some things I had to have was I needed to be able to stand up comfortably. I needed to have a composting toilet. I needed to have an oven, a workspace that was somewhere that wasn't my bed. And then I also wanted to have enough power in this system that I didn't have to worry about it as I'm charging batteries and uh, running my laptop um, and all that kind of stuff whilst I'm working inside. So I managed to fit all that stuff. So let's get stuck into this tour. So let's start off at the door. So in this drawer here, we have the fridge and the storage for food and all that kind of stuff. Now it is a 40 litre fridge from XTM. 
just cheap and cheerful, but because it's plastic, it's actually a lot lighter. Now, one thing I did have to really worry about in this camper was weight. So very, very happy with this little bad boy. Food and stuff there, obviously. Now coming into this back section, so this table actually spins around and then it drops down for Sam's bed. Now, because we're traveling all the time, I didn't want to have a situation where I have to spoon him every night as well. We have our own beds, which is awesome. So that just drops down uh, and then these cushions push over to make a bed. Under these seats though, we have a fair amount of storage. So we've got all of our camping gear and all that kind of stuff on top there. Um, that's pretty much really, like good to go, but we don't really touch that too much unless we're actually out hiking. To have the Eurovision windows, cool thing about these are that they open up, but then we have the fly screen that comes down from the top or a full block out blind as well. So it doesn't let any light in. It's actually super dark in here, even in the middle of the day, uh, if we have everything closed up, which is awesome. Uh, under this seat, we've got another storage bit on top and then that's where all my batteries and uh, electrical system is under the back there. So I'll just show you that quickly. So I've just taken the uh, tabletop off there for just for a bit of better access. Uh, and then under each of these panels, this is Sam's bedding stuff in here and then his hiking bag and whatever. So that's a bit of extra storage there. And then there's a false floor and then the battery's under there. So let's get stuck into that. So this is hidden away pretty well and I don't really have to get in here very often so that's why I'm not too worried about it being a little bit of a pain in the ass to get to. Now for the batteries I've got two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Now I can charge those three different ways. I have 400 watts of solar up top. I have uh, a BCDC running from the front of the vehicle so as I'm running um, I can charge them up and then I also have a 240 volt input uh, which is all managed by this uh, Red Arc battery management system. Now the BMS30, which is what it is, is an absolute beast and it just makes this whole electrical system super easy. Now at the front, it also has the monitoring system here so I can see how much power is coming in, how much I'm using and then how long until it's flat or how long until it is full as well. Now it's just a very, very simple machine and well, it's, it's a technical machine, but it makes my life very simple. So I'm very, very happy that I splashed out on that one. So Red Arc BMS 30, absolute lifesaver. Now in here as well, I have a 600 watt inverter. I don't use so many things where I actually need like a really high power output. So um, it's pretty much just for Sam's computer and that's literally it. Like everything else runs off 12 volts. So 600 watt inverter is good enough for me. I also have a diesel heater in here um, and that's just on a remote. And then also like the, um, the monitoring system for the diesel heater is on the front here as well. Now throughout the, um, throughout the camper, we have a bunch of like 12 volt access points. So one on this side here, just here, one on the other side and then up near my bed, all that kind of stuff, which we'll get to a little bit later as well. But that's that 12 volt system that I really wanted to make sure that I had enough power to sit here and work for a couple of days, even if it was rainy and foggy and all that kind of stuff and just not have to stress about the power usage. So yeah, love this 12 volt system. In the kitchen, we have an oven here, which I'm so stoked to have for the first time. So it's got a two burner cooker on top and then just the oven down here. Over here, we have a spice rack, which I absolutely love. Just makes everything super easy to access. I love cooking, so yep, that's very good to have there. In the top drawer, we have all of our cutlery, bowls, plates, cups, knives, all that kind of stuff. Bottom one, we have our so, uh, pots, pans, Tupperware, a little bit of bread and all that kind of thing. Plus, it's where our rubbish bin is, obviously, and um, chopping boards as well. Then we also have the sink up here. Now, I just wanted to make sure that like all of our bench tops are like looking nice and clean. So I just have that little cover on top uh, and then the fold up um, sink here. Now, just got the, uh, the switch for the water pump down here, so I can just turn that on and off, and then, yeah, just 
simple system. Uh, these are the charging points for the bed that I was talking about as well. So if I'm up in bed, I can still charge my phone, laptop, all that kind of stuff. So very, very handy to have. Now moving on to the bathroom. So this was a, also another must have for me, which is a composting toilet. So the cover just comes off, but also another seat, obviously. Um, and then here, so the way it works, Two's go in the back and number one's go in the front and it's just got a pee separator at the front here. So the pee goes down into a bottle, poo goes down into the back and then we just have a little shovel there with the sawdust to go in over the top. Uh, at the moment it's just going into a biogradable bag. So that goes in there and then have the toilet, um, toilet paper plus um, vinegar spray to spray down the little pea separator there. And that's pretty much it. Um, it also has a fan system in there, which is all directed outside. Um, and then that switch is just here. So flick that, and then you can hear those fans running, which this side pushes, and then on the other side that pulls, uh, which keeps everything in here smelling A-OK. -okay. You literally can't smell it, which is awesome. Um, not that I've fully loaded it up, but um, yeah, it, even if it sits in there for like a couple of days with the sawdust on top and the fans going, you literally can't smell a thing, which is tip top. So moving on past the uh, composting toilet. Uh, under here we have just a little storage area for shoes. Um, yep, yeah, she's a bit, a bit messy in there at the minute. Uh, and then behind that is actually the tank for the air compressor as well. So moving on to the cupboards. This is just closed storage in here. Um, nothing amazing about that. I have mine up top and then Sam has his here. And then this one's just like a bit of a miscellaneous drawer down the bottom here. So yeah, that's a bit of everything down there. Now the bed up top at the moment looks quite small, but it actually pulls out the whole way to here so then that's actually a queen size so i sleep width ways i'm six foot and he's just six foot from um from in from side to side so i normally probably like sleep on a little bit of an angle and stuff anyway or sleep a little bit tucked up so it's actually like a pretty good size for me and it's just a super super easy system just sliding it out the whole way and then the bit at the back that folds down and then you just got your bed and then same deal to put it away just slide it all the way back, done. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What else are we missing in here? Splashback maybe? Oh, splashback. No, um, <laughs> so yeah, this is just literally just stick on tiles. Um, I didn't want to put like proper tiling in here because of the weight and all that kind of thing. So um, you can't really tell unless you're actually like touching it and look at it like really closely. Um, but yeah, I, I like it, adds a little kitcheny feel to it. The other thing I probably forgot to mention is the styling. So I got this cushion blanket and then the other cushions and stuff that you see in the sitting area from Pony Rider. Um, that was super nice and sent this stuff out for me. I really like it. I think it adds a nice little homey feel to it. So very, very happy with these. Now the other thing um, probably forgot to mention is the, um, the zip up windows here just adds so much ventilation. There's one on each side, but also zips the whole way up. To make it all waterproof. Um, yeah, very happy with that. Um, ventilation just rips through here, so it's very, very nice. I think that's pretty much it though. Um, yeah, if you've liked this camper tour, please let me know in the comments Is that if there's things that you would change or things that you would add or take out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. For me, this is my dream camper. I'd love to hear what your dream camper is. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you guys out on the adventures with us. It would mean the absolute world to me. So, see you in the next one.
before we jump on to the Love to have you guys sticking around at the, the 2003 Land Rover Defender on, um, yeah, I lost it, lost it, lost it. Five cylinder, turbo diesel. What else is it? <laughs> Let's get stuck into this camper build. Yes! <laughs> yes! I got it! Ah! 30th take. <laughs> 